kindness. It's a very special image. A majority of Christians, especially in the eastern India, have nothing much to celebrate this Easter holiday, a day which, according to the Bible, Jesus was crucified, died, and resurrected after three days. Their fear is due to approaching India's general election, which is expected this April. With the election on the horizon and Hindu nationalist Prime Minister Narendra Modi widely expected to win, many Christians fear they may once again become targets. Deputy was among those attacked in 2008 when mobs rampaged through parts of India's eastern state of Odisha after the murder of a Hindu priest and his four followers. The murder was widely blamed on Christians and the ensuing revenge rampage left at least 110 people dead. Aged 19 at the time, she was gang raped by a mob enraged that her uncle had refused to recant his Catholicism. I remember it every minute. I had been living there since childhood. I recognize them from their voice. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to benefit our people. Even now, the danger persists. When we remember those old scenes and watch the news about the ongoing incidents of violence against Christians, we feel scared. They have been saying for a long time that they won't let Christians live here. She was one of scores of women who, according to community leaders, were sexually assaulted across the district. Mobs targeted dozens of churches, prayer halls, and Christian homes, forcing tens of thousands to flee. Last year, the Vatican greenlighted the start of beatification process towards potential sainthood for 35 of those killed in the violence, a group the church called the Kandamal Matayas. Local Odisha Archbishop John Barwa called the move a source of renewed faith and hope. A simple memorial for those who were killed has been erected in the village of Tiangia. Even now the danger persists. When we remember those old scenes and watch the news, about the ongoing incidents of violence against Christians, we feel scared. They have been saying for a long time that they won't let Christians live here. We don't like that. Prasanna Bishnoi, head of Kandamal's Survivors Association, said church recognition that people had died because of their faith was welcomed, but that honoring the dead did nothing to address the worries of the living. Even now it is happening. So that shows so key the ill feeling that we have towards the Christianity, it persists, it remains in the people. So now when the question comes, now how do we feel? We are not sure of the feeling of the people who are anti-Christians. Six weeks of voting in marathon general election begin on April 19, but few doubt the June 4th result with the ruling Hindu nationalist Bayartia Janata Party BJP in power for a decade, widely tipped to win again. Critics accuse Modi's BJP of wanting to turn officially secular India into a Hindu nation, something he denies. And uh, so for Muslim communities, they say, you, if you at all you remain in India, you have to be Hindu, otherwise you have to go to Pakistan. Similar things we came to know, if you want to remain in India, then you have to be Hindu, otherwise you have to go to the Christian countries. Because we, apart from Hinduism, we don't entertain any other religion in India. Right-wing Hindu groups have long accused Christians of forcibly converting Hindus and this allegation, which the community has vehemently denied, has resulted in attacks. India has 1.4 billion people and according to the last census, more than 2% are Christians. Believers say the religion has been present in the country for nearly two millennia since the Apostle Thomas arrived 
in the year AD 52. The New Delhi based United Christian Forum UCF rights watchdog recorded 731 attacks against Christian in India last year, warning of vigilante mobs comprising religious extremists. In Kandamal, the trauma of 2008 attacks haunts survivors, fearful they could be targeted again. The housewife said she has lived since 2008 violence in the resettlement camp nearby and rarely returns to her village. They destroyed our home, set it on fire. We had nothing, not even a piece of cloth, not even food or water. We had small children with us. We grabbed them and ran into the forest. When Modi in January inaugurated a grand temple to the deity Ram in the northern city of Ayodhya, sparking Hindu celebrations nationwide, the girl and her neighbors stayed at home. The temple was built on the site of a centuries-old mosque whose destruction by Hindu zealots in 1992 sparked sectarian riots that killed 2,000 people nationwide, most of them Muslims. The BJP admits there is a level of threat perception but says it is trying to change that. In a country of 1.4 billion, billion people, there will be certain elements in, in the country where uh, because of certain historical or you know, local issues, uh, they must have uh, expressed. But I think as a secular country, uh, it is important that uh, you know, uh, the law takes its own course of action. Prime Minister Modi has been engaging with the Christian community and the leaders to reassure them that the country is for everyone. It is not just for the majority community. Bishnoi from the Survivors Association said seeing Modi meeting Christians helped him feel safe. Kevin Sewe, Mwanzo TV.